The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of Spirit of Faith Family Church and J. Eberly Ministries. Welcome to our broadcast today. We're studying the subject of the God kind of faith and how God has dealt that faith to us. Today we're going to go a step further. We're going to talk about how the faith we have must be expressed. We must act on our faith. Unless we act on our faith, we won't get any results. Our faith will lie more or less dormant or inert and as the Bible says, dead. It won't be producing anything. So we're going to look at that in our broadcast today. You can have a vibrant, active, growing faith. One of the way faith grows is by expressing it. And we get into talking today in the broadcast about learning not to worry. We'll see you again at the end of the broadcast to talk to you more about this. The Word's supposed to increase you. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. It's supposed, life is supposed to be progressing. You're to know God better. Yeah. You're, to, you're to be walking in more joy. Yeah. You're to be walking in less worry. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You're to be walking in increase yeah. of soundness of mind. Yeah. You're to be increasing in your health. Yeah. And, and you're, you're to increase in wisdom. Yeah. Increase in the love walk. Yeah. Increase in finances. Yeah. Increase, increase. God's the God of increase. Yeah. And if you're stagnant, you're not walking by faith. Because faith will keep reaching. We're going to talk about faith. We're going to go a little different direction with it a little bit. And uh, I believe it's going to help us. Amen. James chapter 2, we're going to start reading in verse, well, I'll tell you what, for time's sake, let's just read verse number 17. In talking about faith, we've been talking about uh, what faith is to a degree. We talked about its confidence, it's being sure, it's being certain, it's being persuaded. Amen. Amen. It's getting to the place where the questions aren't uh, all the, yeah, but what about this? And yeah, but what about that? It's not there anymore. Amen. And that's what believing it in your heart means. It means you settled it. You're sure about it. You're not wavering as James chapter number one says. Amen. Bible says, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Yes, nothing wavering means nothing doubting. Amen. Not differing, one translation says. Not, not uh, disagreeing with what God's word says. Right. When you get to that place in your heart, that means you're believing it in your heart. Yes, Amen. But faith has to be not just in your heart. It has to be in your actions. Yes. And uh, so, and we talked about God giving us the measure of faith, and we talked about that faith can grow. Yes. How does it grow? You have to feed it, number one. The Word of God is faith food. My, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen? Amen. That's how you live. It's not just natural things that keeps you alive and keeps you strong and provides your needs. It is God's Word getting in your heart. Amen. So that's number one, how faith grows. Number two, you have to exercise it. Yes. You'll never get very far if you don't keep stretching your faith. Amen. You need to be glad you go to a church that keeps stretching you Amen. and don't let you get lazy. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, you can get lazy. Nobody can make you do anything or don't even have a desire to make you do anything. But we do have a desire to help you. And so we keep on encouraging you to stretch and reach and don't just sit comfortable on your uh, current, you know, faith where you're at currently in your faith, but keep on reaching and stretching. Amen. Amen. And keep acting whenever the flesh, keep the flesh uncomfortable. Amen. Amen. Keep, keep the mind uncomfortable. The mind wants to get comfortable and have everything, you know, every, the bank's full of money and everything's fine. And, you know, we, we just trust in the bank account and trust in, in this or trust in that. But faith doesn't like to keep the flesh and the mind comfortable. All right. Faith wants to keep on stretching and reaching for more. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And I love just stretching all the time because that just keeps me from getting fat and flabby spiritually. Yes. It's exercise. You have to exercise your faith. Yes. Faith is not, it's not enough just to have faith. Yeah. Nowhere, nowhere in the Word of God does it teach that if you just believe something in your heart, you'll get answers. I said it doesn't teach that in the Word of God. It teaches releasing your faith. It teaches acting on your faith. Look at James 2.17 here. He's talking about faith and he said, Faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Then verse 24 also, excuse me, verse number 26. 
As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Now, we know many translations will say, rather than works, it'll say actions that correspond or corresponding actions. Faith without corresponding actions is dead. He didn't say it's not faith. He just said it's not alive. It's not doing anything. You know, a guy uh, lives out his life and dies, and we have his funeral. Um, this, this, whenever he is, uh, he's up here uh, in the casket, it does, he, whenever he died, he didn't cease to exist. He himself went to be with the Lord, and his body's laying here. Right. Amen. Amen. In other words, there was a separation of the inward man that went to be with the Lord and his body, his house. Right. Amen. Paul called, uh, or excuse me, Peter and Paul, actually, they called this body the tabernacle or a house that we live in. And so he said, just like whenever a man is dead physically, he said, that's what faith without actions is like. It, it's still uh, faith, but it's separated from actions, and therefore it's not alive. That body's not alive anymore because it's the man on the inside was separated and went on to be, if he's born again, went on to be with the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. And so faith, if it doesn't have actions, is faith all right? If, it's, uh, if you're believing something in the heart, but just believing it in your heart won't do any good. The Bible says here in this passage, this second chapter of James, devils believe and tremble. It's not that they are saved because they believe Jesus rose from the dead. No, it's, it takes more than just believing it. There's a lot of people that don't want to uh, confess Jesus as Lord and surrender their life to Him in America today. They believe Jesus is Lord and that He rose from the dead, but they don't want to do anything with it yet. Right. Somebody said, what's going to happen? They're going to go to heaven? According to the Bible, not. Amen. You got to live it. You got to act on it. Amen. Amen. Actions must correspond. So faith without corresponding actions is dead. Now, I like what one man said, uh, and it bears out in many scriptures. He said, he, 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 des he described it this way. He said, faith without uh, expression is dead. Faith has to have expression. You might say something like, well, let's say I'm a high, high wire walker. And I like to walk across, you know, the tire wire between two high-rise buildings and walk across there. And uh, I've done it many times. And, and, uh, you, and I say, do you believe I can do this? And you all say, you've seen me do it many times. Oh, sure, I know you can do that. And so I do it, and everybody's yay, yay. And then I say, uh, here's a wheelbar. Why don't you get in it, and I'm going to push you across. <laughs> you believe I can do that? Yeah, you can do that. Well, jump in then. Uh... <laughs> Well, see, when it comes to a human, that's probably smart because humans can fail. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not implying that it's necessarily intelligent to get in the wheelbarrow while I... But my point is, when it comes to God, it's not enough just to say, yeah, God can do it. I trust that He can do it. You got to act that way. When He says, okay, I want you to step out and start tithing. Oh, blah, 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 blah. See, faith has to have actions that correspond. Yeah, right. Something that goes, see, prove it. You say you believe it, prove it. Amen. I woke up, well, I, actually, I woke up one morning a year or so ago, and it rang through the room. Just God was talking to me. He said, show God you have faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I could tell he was displeased. And I went to prayer. I said, what, what have I displeased you in? I was looking for what, what, what was I not showing God I had faith in? And he showed me how to do with preparing for some things to come. And he, he was displeased that I wasn't getting ready for it. And uh, so, see, faith gets ready for whatever God says is coming Amen. to pass. Amen. Faith just acts like it's going to be that way. Amen. Whenever the doctor says it's cancer and you've got six months to live, faith does not start making funeral plans. <laughs> You act like you're going to live. Yeah. Now, I don't mean do that in front of the preacher because that's what he wants you to do. But at home, you go home and make funeral plans on your own. I'm not talking about that just to please somebody. I mean before God Almighty because of what you believe in your heart based on what Psalm said, David said, I'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. I'm not talking about living forever down here because we'll all die eventually, live out our life. But I'm talking about the devil trying to take you out prematurely. Yeah. Faith will start acting like I'm going to go on and live. 
God says, I have a bigger house or a nicer house for you. One where the bed, kids don't have to stay, you know, stack on top of one another in the bedrooms and, you know, where you can turn around in the kitchen when somebody else is in there. And <laughs> Amen. Faye will start looking for it. Faye will go ahead and start packing some boxes. Faith will say, it's coming. We're looking for it. We're looking for it. It'll start, not, it'll start just not looking at houses. It'll call the realtor and say, hey, we want to look at this one. We want to look at that one. It starts acting like it's coming to pass. And they go to the banker or however you're going to do it. And he says, well, you can't qualify for this. And the Lord says, that's your house. Faith will say, thank you, Lord. That's our house. It'll start saying that. It won't start saying, well, I guess we can't have it because they said no. No, whenever there's a divine, whenever the God's already given you a divine yes, you don't take the devil's no for it. So faith must have corresponding actions. And one of the actions that must correspond with faith is what you say. Amen. It's not enough to have faith. Uh, faith comes by hearing. But see, he's not saying that faith coming is everything. Faith comes, but you've got to release faith. Faith has to, faith is like the internet. It comes to you and then you can send things out. Right. You can send things and communicate with other people through the internet. Yes. Television, you can't. They can send a signal to you, but you can't talk to them. Right. You know. Amen. And so faith is, uh, is more, is a two-way thing. Yes. Faith must come, but faith must be released. Yes. <clears throat> and faith must be, uh, be sown into your circumstances by the actions that you, that you uh, put out. Amen. Amen. Faith comes by hearing, but you've got to release faith by acting on the Word of God. Yes, sir. Amen. The word you hear won't profit you unless you mix faith with it. You remember Hebrews, it says in the fourth chapter, the second verse, that they heard the Word, the Israelites heard the Word, but it didn't profit them. All right. See, the Word is supposed to benefit you. Yes, sir. The word's supposed to increase you. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. It's supposed, life is supposed to be progressing. You're to know God better. You're to, you're to be walking in more joy. You're to be walking in less worry. Amen. Amen. You're to be walking in increase of soundness of mind. You're to be increasing in your health and, and you're, you're to increase in wisdom, increase in the love walk, increase in finances, increase, increase. God's the God of increase. And if you're stagnant, you're not walking by faith. Because faith will keep reaching. Faith will keep stretching. I get perturbed at some people sometimes. They talk about their income and their, and, and, and their, their uh, you know, whatever, their you know, social security check or something like that. And they just, uh, I, there's people in this congregation that have been stuck since I got here financially been stuck since I got preach the word to them preach the word to them goes in one ear they bob their head and say amen because it registers on their spirit and goes out the other ear and they go out and say I can't do this I can't do that I'm on a fixed income oh. well like Dr. Dufresne said over and over again who fixed it you fixed it by the words of your mouth and your refusal to renew your mind and your refusal to act on the word of God God's got ways of best blessing you beyond your fixed income, beyond your social security check. Act like it's so. Kick unbelief in the teeth and back it out of your life and say, I'm not living in this little bound up place anymore. Kick the sides out of the box you're living in and get out there where God, where God lives. Hallelujah. It won't profit you if you don't mix faith with it. How do you mix faith? You mix faith with your tongue and you mix faith with your actions. Amen. Hallelujah. Now you've got to release faith and without releasing faith, the faith in your heart is powerless. See, it doesn't do anything until it's acted on. Amen. You're no better off uh, with faith in your heart without acting on it than a man is without any faith in his heart. I said, you're no better off with faith in your heart without acting on it than a man without any faith in his heart. Amen. Well, let me see over here. If they... You're no better off. You're no better off without acting on it. Remember there in Acts 14, a man sat there and heard Paul preach. He had faith to be healed. Paul perceived he had faith to be healed. Yet he's sitting on crippled legs. He was no better off with faith in his heart to be healed. He was no better off with all that faith in his heart, then a man didn't have faith in his heart. It wasn't until Paul said, stand upright on thy feet. 
The man got up and acted on the faith he had. Now he's better off. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to get an attitude about your faith. Get up every morning and make yourself shout. Make yourself speak the word. I've been doing that more often. It changes the way your day starts out. A lot of times I got to get out of the bedroom because Pastor Debbie's a night person and I'm a morning person, you know. So she sleeps later than I do. But I get up and I go downstairs. Glory be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. And I'm already going. And I just get myself stirred up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's many people that believe in Jesus, but they've not released their faith in him. And they think they're okay. They're not. It's a counterfeit. Amen. Now, um, your confession and actions are to have perfect fellowship uh, and be in harmony with what you believe in your heart. Unless you release faith through actions, it will lie more or less inert and dormant. You'll have a passive faith rather than an active faith. Because uh, you're waiting for something to happen. A lot of Christians sitting around waiting for God to do something, waiting on the sovereignty of God. Well, you don't understand redemption. Redemption allowed you to initiate some things. Amen. Redemption allowed you to start saying some. Mark 11, 23 didn't say, just wait on God. And just, just say, just sing, come by ya, my Lord, come by ya. Whatever the Lord will do, will do. Whatever will be, will be. The future is not ours to see. Come by ya, Lord, come by ya. That's not what Mark 11, 23 is all about. Mark 11, 23 is about seeing something in the Word and then you saying it. You saying it. Mark 11, 23 is not even, God's not even mentioned in Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23 says, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but thou believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he'll have whatever he saith. Somebody's saying, are you trying to say God's not involved? I didn't mean God's not involved. I just mean that verse is talking about what you have to do for the power to, to activate the power of God. Amen. Amen. Don't sit around waiting on God. Get your generator going. Amen. Start acting like the word of God's true. You want your flesh to get squirmy, you start acting like the word of God's true. That's why a lot of you keep backing off because your flesh gets uncomfortable and, uh, uh, and, and it presents needs when you act on the word. Sure. Sure does. But you said you're a faith person. Amen. People back off because the, the devil starts, you know, hounding and talking down there, you know, in their ear and breathing the hot breath of unbelief down their neck. Well, if you do that, what are you going to do? Well, are you going to get the money? Well, if God's in it, it'll work. I'm not saying just do any old thing that comes to your mind, but if God's in something, amen. You don't want your faith just to be passive. Amen. People in the old days used to do that just waiting on tarrying to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Just passive faith, waiting for God to fill them. They read over there in Acts 2 where it says they all, be, Jesus actually told them, tarry in Jerusalem until you're being due with power from on high. So they thought that's the way you get filled with the Holy Ghost back in the early days of the Pentecostal movement. And so they'd go over, they'd, get, they'd spend all night tarrying for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Didn't know that you could just receive it by faith. Amen. They're waiting on God and God's waiting on them. So what, nothing's happening. It's like a game of checkers. If I'm waiting on you to move, but you already moved and I didn't notice you moving. I'm waiting on you. I, in my mind, I'm waiting on you. And in your mind, you're waiting on me. And so what's happening? Yeah, Nothing. We're both staring at the checkerboard. Yeah. And in our mind, we're thinking it's, it's, it's uh, their move. Yeah. And, it's, and, and that's the way God is. God made his move whenever he said the baptism of the Holy Ghost is available. Yeah. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Well, don't do that in any other area. Yeah. So the reason the majority of Christians, although they're sincere, all right, but they're still weak yeah. is because they haven't dared act on God's word. Yes. They, have, they say they have faith, but they've never dared confess it or never talked about who they are in Christ yeah. or never start uh, acting like the word of God's true. Yeah. They haven't dared do that yet. Amen. That's why they're weak. Yes. Are you out there? Yes. 
Yeah, their faith is, is, is throttled, so to speak. It's sort of held back. <clears throat> it's like it's got a, a, a limiter on it or a governor. It only lets them go so far. You understand what I'm talking about? Because that, and, and they're held in bondage because they don't act on it. Faith grows by confessions and by acting on it. And guess what? It'll never go beyond your actions. You'll never have a greater faith than you're willing to act on. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you out there? Yes. Now, um, here he said, faith without actions is dead. What I got, what the Spirit of God was talking to me about this afternoon, about talking to you about is, is another expression of faith, you know, or one particular expression of faith, I guess I would say. <clears throat> and that is the, the expression of, uh, expressing your, your faith by staying in peace during the storm, yeah. during troubled times. Amen. During the season of tests and trials. Amen. Keeping your attention on the word and on what God said he's already done for you. And rather than on all the suggestions of the enemy and all the trouble he's talking to your mind about. Amen. All the worry, anxiety, and fear that he brings to you and to make you troubled and uneasy. Amen. When you're restless, you're not believing the word. I've done this. I've seen myself do this. And the Lord pointed myself out to myself. <laughs> you say you're believing God for something and you're walking, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I believe I receive. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I believe I receive. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I, uh, in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. <laughs> we laugh because we've all done it. <laughs> That's not faith. Well, it's, it's, it sounds like a confession of faith, Pastor Jay. Yeah, but my other actions betray me. You know, you ever, you ever heard people panic praying? Maybe you heard it in your own bedroom whenever you were the only one there, you know. God, we've got to have a miracle quicker or else. God, we've got to have a miracle quicker, you know. You know, or... You know what inspired that quote unquote unction that they got? You know what inspired that? It wasn't the Holy Spirit or it wasn't wor the word and it wasn't the faith of their heart. It was a bad report that somebody gave them, the doctor gave them or somebody and, and or they heard about their, their, some, some bad situation in the news. And, oh, we, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we, Lord, we're believing you. We're believing you. We're believing you. We're believing you. You're not believing God. Amen. See, faith is expressed in words and in actions. You need to know it's not just actions, but there are other things that go along with the expressions of faith. Go over to the book of Romans and let's just see this. Hallelujah. I'm glad y'all came to church tonight because I wanted, I wanted to hear this sermon myself. <laughs> Look here in the 15th chapter of Romans, the 13th verse. Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope, that means expectation, which is a part of faith, by the way. Yes. Expecting something to show up in the natural realm that you've already believed you received is part of faith. Yes. So the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Yes. Joy and peace yes. in believing. Yes. Now, whenever I'm saying the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, am I in joy and peace? No. No, no joy, and certainly no peace. Yeah, out there, you're going home. So these corresponding actions must line up with what the Bible says faith is really like. <laughs> so you've got to express your faith for it to benefit you. But uh, faith is expressed in more than just words. It's expressed in actions and even in mannerisms. Go over here to Romans, the fourth chapter. You're in Romans. Just back up to the fourth chapter. I want you to see something God said about Abraham's faith. We're so familiar with this. Verse number 16 talks about uh, uh, God talking to Abraham and uh, saying about his seed, talking about his seed. And then Abraham, in verse 17, called things that be not as though they are. He called himself the father of multitude whenever he didn't have any children yet. Then verse 18, who against hope, uh, believed in hope. In other words, he had no reason to expect it to come to pass, but because he got into faith, then he expected it to come to pass. 
against hope, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. Notice that. According, Abraham's faith was according to what was spoken. And that's what your faith is based on, what was spoken. I'm just believing God that Pastor Jay will give me his pickup truck. Was that spoken? Was that spoken? No, you just made that up. Amen. You can't believe God unless he has spoken, and you can't believe a person unless they have spoken. You know, so many times people talk about the sovereignty of God and God doing this because he sovereignly wanted to do it. Well, a lot of things God has already done for us in Christ. He's just waiting for someone to believe him because believing him puts his power into action. It's like Smith Wigglesworth said. It's as if God will jump over a thousand men to get to someone using their faith. God responds to faith. Praise God. So we must learn to express it. And expressions are more than just what we say. They're the way we say it. We can say it in peace and joy, and that would be faith. Or we can say it in anxiety, and that wouldn't be. So we're learning to do this and express our faith. Stay tuned. Pastor Jay will be right back with a few closing comments. Every day we make confessions, fear confessions, faith confessions. But what many do not realize is that what you say does matter. The Bible instructs us how to hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering. This means that we are to say what we believe according to the Word of God. In this powerful teaching, Pastor Jay gives 10 realities of what our true confession of faith in God's Word will do for us as believers. So stop and think, what are you saying? Go online to SOFFC.org and order your copy of this single CD for only $5 and learn how to make the right confessions today. We want to encourage you to go online and order the offer we have today. It's a new offer, 10 Realities of Confession. The Bible tells us that faith must be expressed and confession is one way we make expressions of faith. The Bible tells us that confession is used in the area of making confession of sin. But so many times Christians, they emphasize that and not the confession of their faith before God. God wants you to say what you believe and express it to Him. He responds to that. Praise the Lord. So we'll be back next week, same time, same station, talking to you more about these things. God wants you to grow. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So we'll see you next week. God bless you. Goodbye. Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. He didn't say our weekly Sunday service bread. If you're not going to faint from day to day, and what if you're losing your joy? You're fainting. What if you're losing your peace? You're fainting. You know, you can go through all the motions you're supposed to be going through, but there's no joy in it anymore. That's because you didn't have your daily bread and you're growing faint. When you're daily fed on the Word, you're not sad, you're not depressed because a bunch of time has passed and you haven't seen what God said come to pass yet. You're just as thrilled with it today as the first day He said it or that you saw it in the Word. The preceding program was brought to you by friends and partners of Spirit of Faith Family Church and J. Eberly Ministries.